सहनौ भुनक्तु सह वीर्यम करवावहै तेजस्विनावधी तमस्तु मा विद्विशावहै ओम शांति 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 ही समस्त जन कल्याणे निरतम करुणामयम नमामि चिन्मयम देवम सद्गुरुम ब्रह्म विद्वरम सद्गुरुम ब्रह्म विद्वरम ओम श्री चिन्मय सद्गुरा वे नमः 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 फर्स्ट एंड द सेकंड मंत्र ऑफ सेकंड वल्ली यू कैन रिपीट अन्यच्छ्रेयो न्यदुतै वप्रेयः ते उभे नानार्थे पुरुषगम सिनीतह तयो श्रेय आददानस्य साधु भवति ही अतेर था द्यू प्रेयो वृणीते श्रेयस्च प्रेयस्च मनुष्यमेतह तौसं परित्य विविनक्ति धीरह तयो श्रेयो ही धीरो भी प्रेयसो वृणीते प्रेयो मंदो योगक्षेमात वृणीते So after having offered all different temptations to Nachiketa, Yamacharya begins the second valli by praising Nachiketa. If you want to see the distribution of verses, verse number 1 through 13 is praise of Nachiketa. In the second valli, a slight echo. Huh? Verse number 1 through 13 is the praise of Nachiketa. Verse number 14, <coughs> our Nachiketa repeats the question. He says, teacher, you are praising me, it is very good, but I hope you have not forgotten the question. So he repeats it in 14th mantra. 15th until 25th mantra is the teaching of Katopanishad. What is the nature of Atma? That is taught in 14th mantra to 25th mantra of 2nd Valli. So first mantra through 13th mantra is praise of Nachiketa. 14th mantra is repetition of the question. 15th through 25th is the teaching of Katopanishad. What is nature of Atma? So this mantra said, Nachiketa, you chose self-abidance as your goal. You chose that Atma Tattva as your goal in spite of being offered so many things. Power, position, wealth, family, everything I offered and you chose Atma Tattva only, you did not change your boon. Remember there were three boons, right? What is the first boon? He asked for, may my father have good night's sleep. May he start loving me the same way as he loved me before. Second boon he asked, how can I go to Swarga? He did not say, how can I go? He said, how would anybody who likes to go, how would they go to Swarga? So 
so bhakti te- teaching was given how to have a beautiful mind such that our mind is cheerful and happy so this is where seeing ourselves in this whole universe expanding our understanding of i that was mentioned as the main sadhana upasana means seeing everything as god and feeling closeness with that bhagwan so in a way we are feeling closeness with each and everything of this universe that will reduce raga dvesha he says that is the second technique or the second boon that nachiketa asked then came the third boon he asked is there something which is independent of conditionings or am i always with conditionings and conditionings alone are absolute when conditionings are dropped does something continue or is this conditioned existence my only existence so in a way he is asking about nature of atma please tell me the nature of atma tell me in detail not in brief so this was the third boon and yamacharya said don't worry about this question i will give you chariots i will give you horses i will give you wealth power position take all of that for a long time you'll be happy why ask this question about atma nachiketa says no i have seen the limitations in those things even your position as yama is temporary he says until you are there i'll be safe once your position changes there is no certainty these things will continue and no matter how long a person lives they always feel they have not lived long enough so what is the point in having a long life so nachiketa is very firm he has seen the limitations of what all things life can offer and now he is asking for that truth now yamacharya says in first mantra anya shreya ha anya dutaiva preya ha these two paths shreya and preya they lead to two different goals te ube nanarthe purushagam sinitah both of them will bind a person both of them will bind a person tayo shreya adadana se sadhu bhavati one who has chosen shreya everything is good for that person and hiyate arthad yau preyo vrunite one who chooses preya he is deprived of supreme most purpose of human birth quiz question what is one line definition of shreya huh seeking self abidance is path of shreya what is path of preya seeking solace in conducive situations is path of preya hold on to this definitions eh? because whole katopanishad is rooted in this if you miss this definition or change it slightly later on we will wonder what are they talking about one meaning of shreya preya we saw preya means path of pleasant shreya means path of good that is simple meaning either with food habits or with other choices there will be one pleasant choice which i conveniently want to do and another good choice which i should be doing that is one definition if you hold on only to that definition and study katopanishad later mantras will not talk about our day to day choices at all mm-hmm. they are going to talk about choice between atma and anatma and what is the nature of atma that's why we need to hold on to the second definition of shreya preya seeking abidance in the self is shreya and finding solace in conducive situations is called as preya at body level what can be the best conducive situation every sense organ gets whatever it wants all this point we have seen eh? but one week one weekend break means two week gap <laughs> <laughs> every sense organ gets precisely what it wants that is conducive situation at body level what is conduciveness at mind level getting love getting trust getting respect if these things are there person's mind is so cheerful 
that is conduciveness at mind level. What is conduciveness at intellect level? Whatever he likes to discuss, whatever he values, he finds a group of people to discuss that. That is when intellect gets satisfaction. Everything being conducive is called as what? Prayer. Hmm? Situation means at body level, at mind level, at intellect level. Seeking solace or seeking shelter in only situations, that is called as prayer. And what is Shreya? Seeking abidance in the self, understanding our nature to be consciousness. Devoid of ego, devoid of conditionings, that self-abidance is called as Shreya. Why would a person go from prayer to Shreya? Why would a person go from prayer to Shreya? He realizes, just look at one example. If it is mind level, love, trust and respect, it is good if we get it. If we are getting it today, can I guarantee from the same person I will get it tomorrow? You see, there is no assurance about this. It is so uncertain, today it might be there, tomorrow it might not be there. And if my whole joy of life depends upon this situation, conduciveness at mind level, he says that mind will go up and down. Our joys will go up and down. That is called as samsara. Samsara means what? Constant moving from one state to another. Samsaranam means to move from one state of mind to another state of mind. Sometimes happy, sometimes sad, sometimes delighted, sometimes depressed. He says that is the condition of banking too much upon paristhiti. At body level, if I see conduciveness, it might take me so far until some point. But there will be a time when even that will not give lasting joy. The one who sees these limitations, he starts inquiring, is there something called as permanent state? Having stayed where, I don't have to worry about any paristhiti. This data only we have not gathered, you know. From childhood onwards, what have we seen? When paristhiti is conducive, manasthiti is conducive. Only when situations are good, I am happy. If situations are little bit here and there, I am disturbed. Puju Guruji says, if setup changes, people get upset. <laughs> Slight thing here and there, either body, mind, intellect, that gives lot of sorrow. But there are people who have walked the path of Shreya, reached such a state where in spite of situations being unconducive, not that they sought it, karma is such, it will come if it has to come. But in spite of it coming, they remain unshaken by those situations. So that kind of a state which is independent of paristhiti, independent of situation, that is what he is seeking. And this mantra says, next mantra, everybody is presented with two paths, Shreyascha Preyascha Manushya Metaha. They come to each person, whoever has studied Vedanta, one is to build conducive situations better and better, make it better and better. That is path of prayer. And another one is to do Shravanam, Mananam, Nididhyasanam. Listen to Shastra, reflect on Shastra, meditate on Mahavakya. That is the path of Shreya. These two paths are available to everybody. The wise person analyzes both these paths and he takes the path of Shreya. Tau samparitya vivinakti dhiraha. He discerns between both the paths and he says, goal of my life is Shreya. Praya is only so that my journey is comfortable towards Shreya. His goal of life is not situations. There is a difference. Eh? We should not literally apply these things. 
see if that if he is living in a house and if that house has a leak will he fix that leak or not if he fixes it will you call him prayarthi <laughs> he is working on situation right he says no even if he does that his goal is not only that he says i am doing this so that i can reach my main goal of self abidance does he spoil all his relationship with people instead of getting love gets you know anger and hatred instead of getting trust gets the opposite he says no he does his vyavahar in the way in a very dharmic way but he says my dependence is not on people another person might be there whose goal itself is pleasing people goal itself is trying to create conditionedness at that level and when he realizes it's fighting a losing battle that person becomes a sadhaka so with lot of keenness he has discerned these two paths and he chooses path of shreya shreyo hi dhiro bhi preya so vrunite compared to the path of preya the one who is a dhira purusha that person chooses path of shreya why do people end up choosing preya mostly path of situations conducive situations this upanishad mantra gives two reasons either they are manda <laughs> what is manda one not only dull one who has failed to see limitations in fixing situations remember this person is not some incompetent person he is not dull as far as worldly matters are concerned very intelligent he is also ethical person he follows okay i'll ask another question here in path of prayer how many purusharthas are included artha purushartha is included or not yes. kama purushartha is included yes. arth dharma purushartha is included yes. how many say no how many say yes okay <laughs> what is missing moksha purushartha there is one small catch here dharma purta purushartha is included but dharma is used to only increase artha and kama he is a very righteous person but his righteousness is limited to increasing more and more wealth more and more desires and our scriptures say righteousness should be used so that we can move towards moksha artha and kama is for journey to be comfortable but goal of life he says is self abidance only so one who is walking on the path of shreya his main purushartha is moksha in the light of moksha he looks at dharma artha kama one who is walking on the path of preya main purushartha is artha and kama in the light of that he looks at dharma somewhere or the other he might look at moksha once in a while that is the difference between these two paths so why would a person not choose shreya one is if somebody has not reflected upon life and these points we should not take just because somebody is telling us eh? it will not convince us neither will it benefit in any way he says we should ourselves see the helplessness we have in maintaining conducive situations at body mind and intellect level in holding the world outside still and conducive we are helpless it might be the most near and dear person still we cannot guarantee anything that is when he starts seeking is there something which is permanent than this material world if you want to add a devotional aspect to this is say the one who has lived a dharmic life with bhagwan's grace he is turned towards higher quest in life ishwar anugrahateva pumsa madvaita vasana how does a person get 
desire to follow path of shreya he says it is god's grace to get this thought that i, I need to seek self abidance i might be doing several things that is not my main goal he says that is grace of bhagwan and second one is why would a person choose prayer over shreya too much pressure of yoga kshema प्रेयो मंदो योग क्षेमा तृणीते योग मीन्स टू गेट समथिंग दैट आई डोंट हैव क्षेम मीन्स टू प्रोटेक्ट दैट थिंग विच आई ऑलरेडी हैव वेन दैट प्रेशर इज टू मच श्रेय मार्ग डजंट अपील टू दैट पर्सन सो दैट इज द सेकेंड रीजन उपनिषद से इज ए पर्सन माइट एंड अप चूजिंग प्रेयर although these two paths are available to everybody but until we start reflecting upon our own life shreya marga will not look appealing to us you know there are more simpler reasons why a person doesn't choose shreya see path of prayer looks very familiar to us if conducive situations are there i am happy we don't need anybody to teach us this right it's very simple you just look at it that is how you understand it but path of shreya we don't even realize what are they talking neither is the goal clear nor is the means clear so first i have to understand what am i seeking over here so in tatva bodha atma bodha right from the beginning they will start teaching that we have to seek that atma we have to develop sadhana chatushtaya so that we can abide in this atma that is the main pursuit of this sadhaka so if one path is as though not clear to me then i will never try walking on that path hmm? i'll take the one which is more familiar and sometimes what happens our idea is very different of joy hmm? we see people around those who are on the path of prayer we feel their life is so happy hmm? they are living such a wonderful life and you see those who are on path of shreya all the time serious hmm? all the time trying to reflect upon something any time you discuss with them they'll start discussing about brahman <laughs> is i am not connecting what are you talking about but really speaking that brahman is ananda swarupa the joy that we are seeking is that brahman which is ananda swarupa so there is some lack of clarity on how we are going to walk this path we have our own ideas we have our own perceptions about this so that's why somebody might say let us not take the unfamiliar path in these things we have to see in our life huh? if you talk to somebody who has no clue of vedanta they ask what are you doing where do you go on weekends he say i go to study some upanishad he say what do you do in upanishad i sit and listen to something then what do you do i discuss with others for what for happiness he says you are discussing you are listening and everything to get happiness He said, "We will show you another path. You come with us. We will go out. It's a weekend. That is another path. Some situation we will create. Which path looks attractive? Prayer looks attractive. You know, Upanishadic teaching. We have to constantly keep seeing how it reflects in our own choices and in the world around us." majority we will find fall under path of prayer where it is something to do with some situation conducive situation but he says the one who has reflected upon limitations of this path he says they will be inspired to walk on the path of shreya i think i had shared this chaupai in the last one 
our uh, kabir das ji he says i was sitting on the banks of a river several people came dived into the river got something or the other and they walked away some got a gem some got something else something meaningful they got and they walked away i was afraid of depth of the water i sat on the shore just watching everybody dive and go back he says this is the condition of somebody who chooses preya over shreya jin kho ja tina paiya he says the one who searched for it that person got it jin kho ja tina paiya gehre pani pet this is because of fear of this deep water i sat there looking at everybody main bapura buda na dara this is i was the one who was afraid of drowning raha kinare bait hmm. means several people walked this path of shreya they walked and they got their goal because i was afraid of yoga kshema because i was afraid of something immediate i chose not to walk that path everybody returned with something i sat there looking at everybody else next verse is again a praise of nachiketa right from first verse onwards he is praising next mantra is specifically praising nachiketa satvam priyan priya roopan shakaman ृंकाजी बहवो मनुष्या मज्जन्ति बहवो मनुष्या O Nachiketa, I offered you all different things which are very, very dear. I offered you wealth. I offered you cattle. I offered you power, position. Priya Rupan also I offered. Priya Rupan means apsaras. They were also offered. In spite of offering, you rejected all these bhogas. How did you reject it? By lot of thinking. अभिध्यायन नचिकेत अत्यसराक्षी अत्यसराक्षी मीन्स रेनाउंस्ड अभिध्यायन मीन्स विथ लॉट ऑफ विवेक समटाइम्स यू से नो टू समथिंग बट लेटर ऑन यू रिग्रेट वाई डिड यू से नो समबडी टोल्ड मी रिसेंटली ए से इन वेडिंग्स टू आस्क फॉर ए सेकेंड इज डिफिकल्ट वेन दे आर ईटिंग सो दे वुड से इट सीम्स सर द अदर पर्सन Serve the next person and then little bit here. You see, if you say no, some no's are such which will later on regret. Why did I say no? But he says in case of Nachiketa, his no is something which is born out of Viveka. He said, "You said no to these things with lot of Viveka. That is something I appreciate." Naitam surunkam vitta mayi mavapta. This particular. Shrunkam. Shrunkam means necklace. Previously, it meant necklace. Huh? Yamacharya gave one necklace to Nachiketa after the second boon. But here, shrunkam means that destination which will lead to bondage. Shrunkam here means kutsi tam gati. Shankara Charji writes that place where everybody gets bound. That place is called as shrunkam. And you chose not to go there. नैताम श्रृंखाम वित्तमयी अवाप्त है स्टार्टिंग विथ ऑल दोज थिंग्स वेल्थ एट्सेट्रा वॉट एवर आई प्रॉमिस्ड दोज थिंग्स आर इफ समबडी वॉक्स मेकिंग इट एज द ओनली गोल ऑफ लाइफ दे विल गेट बाउंड यू चोज नॉट टू वॉक दैट पाथ 
यस्याम मज्जंती बहो मनुष्या सेवरल पीपल कम हियर एंड ड्राउन मज्जंती मीन्स दे गेट ड्राउंड इन विषय पावर इज इंटॉक्सिकेटिंग वेल्थ इज इंटॉक्सिकेटिंग दे बिकम मीनिंगफुल ओनली इट इज ओनली इफ इट इज विथ भगवान पावर पोजिशन वेल्थ विथ भगवान विल कीप अस सेफ माइनस भगवान दी सेम थिंग्स विल बाइंड ए पर्सन so here he says several people would fall for this change their path from shreya to preya but you are the one who stayed steadfast you know our yamacharya he is also demonstrating one quality of a good teacher one duty of a teacher is to scold whenever student makes a wrong choice to scold is duty of the teacher so shankaracharya doesn't hesitate to scold us in bhajagovindam hmm? right from first verse he starts mooda mate mooda mate keeps telling us keeps scolding us but it is also another duty of the teacher to praise the student when he makes the right choice so this is nachiketa who has made the right choice if you want to repeat the student if you want to have the student repeat the right choices he said it is duty of the teacher to praise one dialogue between teacher and student happens outside another dialogue happens inside where the guru is our intellect and disciple is the mind most often mind does mischief it is the role of the intellect to scold the mind pull it back but always scolding 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 no shishya will remain with the guru hmm? advaita guru will be advaita only <laughs> no shishya will stay our mind will get tired if you are constantly criticizing the mind it will always get tired so that mind has to be encouraged also hmm? intellect should encourage the mind guru should encourage shishya parent should encourage the child there is another sambandha guru shishya sambandha child makes wrong choice duty of the parent to scold but whenever the child makes right choice this is those choices have to be encouraged look at yamacharya 13 verses he is speaking praising the student about what great choice he has made now he says previously it was said तयो श्रेय श्रेय आददान से साधु भवती वन हु चूज इज श्रेय एवरी थिंग इज गुड फॉर हिम वाई इज एवरी थिंग गुड फॉर हिम लुक एट द नेक्स्ट वर्स दूर में ते विपरीते विशुचि अविद्याया च विद्ये ज्ञाता विद्यासीन न चिकेत मे नत्वा कामा बहवो लोलुपंत दूर में ते विपरीते विशुचि अविद्याया च विद्ये ज्ञाता विद्या भीपसीन न चिकेत मे नवा कामा बहवो लोलुपंत इफ यू पे अटेंशन टू दिस वर्स एंड रियली अंडरस्टैंड दिस वर्स something very new will open up in our spiritual journey everybody ready you see what the verse says ha huh? dura mete viparite vishuchi these two paths which are there shreya and preya they lead us to destinations which are mutually exclusive and different in their nature viparite means mutually exclusive vishuchi means two different goals and these two goals are far apart that do you can stretch <laughs> dura mete you can say dura mete it doesn't even come close quick review what is the path of shreya where does it lead us self abidance path of prayer leads us to 
conducive situations. And what does this mantra say? Both these results are mutually exclusive. Both these results are mutually exclusive and they are far apart. Do you all agree? Oh, that is very simple if you agree. <laughs> okay, if you agree, you should tell why they are like this. Why are they mutually exclusive and why are they far apart? You can raise your hand that way I know who is talking from where. Huh. Little louder, everybody should hear. One is only towards Anatma, and the other one is to Atma. So these two are obviously opposite. One is towards Anatma, another is towards Atma. Both are mutually exclusive. Good. One is Prabhupada. It keeps you in action. And one is Nivruti. You will pull back. One is the path of Prabhupada, where you have to go out. Another is the path of Nivruti, where you have to go within. So that way it is mutually exclusive. You cannot do both together. Good. Yes, you have raised your hand. Hmm. One is towards conditionings, other one is without conditionings. Last one. Hmm. Hmm. One is leading us towards impermanence, another is leading us towards permanence. Okay, last. Path of knowledge, why don't we call it as path of ignorance, other one? Because next mantra will call it. <laughs> one is path of knowledge, another is path of ignorance. Both cannot be combined. Can you give me some examples? Two mutually exclusive goals which cannot be combined? Light and darkness. I cannot have one room with light also and darkness also. Either it will be light or it will be darkness. Hmm. Another example is going to dream and staying awake. Either I am awake or I am dreaming, I cannot have both together. So what does this mantra say? Either I am abiding in self or I am abiding in situations. I cannot do both together. Still, it doesn't open up much. Eh? Pay attention to this point. This is Ramana Maharshi's blessings upon us. He says, path of prayer is that in which ahankara is protected. No matter which situation it is, the one going through that situation is ahankara. Wherever we go, it might be swarga situation, some other situation, some other loka. Path of prayer, what it is leading us to is protection of ahankara, meaning what? Protection of jivatva. I think I am this person going through suffering, going through this life. That is the path of prayer where ahankara is protected. What is path of shreya? That, that path where the end goal is to negate ahankara through knowledge. What happens when ahankara is negated through knowledge? Our own infinite self is realized. I understand I am not this conditioned individual. I am that infinite consciousness. He says that is the end goal of Shreya. Everybody with me so far? Path of prayer is where ahankara is protected. Path of Shreya is where ahankara is negated. And he says, at the same time, we cannot protect ahankara and negate ahankara also. Hmm. I cannot say this ahankara is satyam, entertain desires through ahankara. At the same time say, I am not ahankara, I am the blissful self. Either I will be there or I will be here. Means either I will sit in atma or I will sit in ahankara. Path of prayer is strengthening the notion that I am ahankara. Path of Shreya is strengthening the notion I am Atma. 
I am the infinite self. That is what Shreya is strengthening. This point, if we hold, we will never get confused between what is Shreya and Preya. Path of good, path of pleasant is one definition. But we will have a lot of difficulty explaining entire Katopanishad with that definition. That is sadhana level choice where we are choosing between good over pleasant. But final teaching that Vedanta wants to give us is to choose Atma over Anatma. And in Anatma, Ahankara is included. In Anatma, Ahankara is included. And our scriptures say, without negating this ego, without falsifying this ego, samsara nivruti is impossible. So that is this line, dura mete viparite vishuchi. They are two mutually exclusive goals and they are far apart. Self-abidance and identifying with ego, they are two different goals. I might think I am abiding in this self, but if I notice carefully, I'll notice, I'll understand, I'm still in the ego. Whatever I entertain as desire, that is one step later. If I think I am this person, then only I will entertain some desire for this person. So doership and enjoyership, they are byproducts. First mistake is thinking ourselves to be this ahankara. So now our uh, Upanishad Rishi, he doesn't call these two paths as Shreya and Preya. You see what he says? Avidya yacha vidyeti nyata. One path is called as avidya, another is path, another path is called as vidya. Avidya means ignorance, vidya means knowledge. Okay, which path is called as avidya? <laughs> path of prayer. Path of prayer is called as avidya, and path of shreya is called as vidya. Why is path of prayer called as avidya? Because the whole transaction is going on with mistaken identity. I took myself to be ahankara and then I am seeking conditionness through body, through mind, through intellect. This is the fundamental ignorance, that is why it is called as avidya. And why is the other path called as vidya? Because there ahankara is negated, my infinitude is understood. So here he switches the words. Instead of saying Preya and Shreya, he calls it as Avidya and Vidya. Avidya yacha vidyeti jnata. And Nachiketa, I consider you as seeker of Vidya. Vidya bhipsinam Nachiketa sam manye. You are not seeking situation as your goal. You are seeking that self-abidance as your goal. Natva kama bahavo lolopanta. Several desires which I presented in front of you. Alolupanta word is there, right? It has a special meaning there. These desires were not powerful enough to make you change your path. Lobha word we have heard. Lobha means greed. When do we say greed has covered a person up or greed has engulfed a person? when it is so powerful to make him act upon it. Just a passing thought is not called greed or it doesn't, that person is not defined as greedy. When that thought becomes so powerful that it pushes him to change his choices, that is called as lobha. You know these advertisements we see? They are SGF, Sankalpa Generation Factory. Sankalpa means what? What thing I don't need, that thought is introduced. Just a passing thought will not do anything. But until it becomes so strong that I act upon it, then only I can say advertisement is successful. So Yamacharya is saying my advertisement was not successful. I presented so many things, but you did not change your path. This is a good news for sadhakas. Eh? 
if only passing thought of prayer had come and that person would be called as prayarthi you say where would we stand what this mantra is telling us is even if a passing thought comes as long as our reverence is for self abidance we might be imperfect right now we are still walking on the path of shreya who will be called as prayarthi one who has lost reverence for self abidance we should pray to bhagwan ha huh, that this whatever little spiritual quest has come he should protect it for us it could be whatever reason person might feel all the self abidance consciousness and all it is not going to give me what i am what i am looking for he might feel it is not worth pursuing it when that happens here he says he has changed his goal in bhagavad gita 6 chapter bhagwan says don't worry about that person also he is called as yoga bhrashta he stepped on the path of yoga but then he stepped away from it he says don't worry there are further lives where he'll again get back on the path of yoga but when that next life will come he says that is based on karma based on his vairagya based on his tapasya that's why it is said jab jage tabhi savera whenever this thought comes that i should seek self abidance transcend this situation level living life living life only at situation level so i have to transcend it he says that thought we have to hold very close vidya bipsanam nachiketha sammanye natva kama bahavo lolupanta now next mantra is called as nahi ninda nyaya ninda means criticism nahi ninda means intention is not to criticize nyaya means maxim the maxim of not having the intention of criticizing the other person although if you read the verse it will look like they are criticizing somebody hmm? literally if you see it you will feel as though somebody is criticized it is just like when they write about ill effects of smoking hmm? is a smoking cancer so smoking causes all these things is the intention to criticize a smoker there intention is not to criticize a smoker intention is to praise the person who chooses not to smoke hmm? the message is to say that one should not smoke it is not only to criticize the one who is smoking that is called as nahi ninda nyaya you are criticizing somebody but your intention is to praise the other person who is doing the opposite of it because when you read this mantra we will feel i know exactly whom it is talking about <laughs> okay it is not talking about anybody it is talking about us that our choice should be path of shreya you see what it says अविद्यायाम अंतरे वर्तम स्वयं धीरा पंडित मनम दंद्रम्यम पर्यती मूढ़ा अंधे नीयम यथांधा अविद्याम वर्तम स्वयं धीरा पंडित मनम दंद्रम्यम पर्यती मूढ़ा अंधे नीयम यथांधा दीज पीपल हू आर क्रिटिसाइजिंग दि पाथ ऑफ श्रेय दे आर बीइंग एड्रेस्ड इन दिस वर्स criticizing path of shreya means what they are saying what you are seeking all this self abidance and all manage your situations well you will be happy if you want to look for an example they say look at us that is said in mantra i am not saying swayam dhira hai they say look at us we have chosen the path of prayer and we are happy what you are seeking all this shreya and all according to upanishad 
This is Upanishad's evaluation about them. Avidyayam antare vartamanaha. All these people, they are roaming around, but roaming around in thick darkness. Hmm. S- rooted deeply in body identification, not seeing anything beyond this body. Avidyayam antare vartamanaha. They are roaming around in ignorance, thick darkness. What is their evaluation about themselves? Swayam dhiraha. We know what we are doing. We are walking on the right path. If somebody says, no, 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 Bhagavad Gita says, you should not have situations as your goal. You should have Atma as your goal. If the word Atma doesn't appeal to you, replace it with Bhagavan. It is one and the same. Instead of saying, I should seek self-abidance, we can also say, I should seek God-realization. Attainment of God is the same as Nishthayan Atma. They say, what are you seeking? All these things are not the right things to be sought. And if you tell them, this is said in Bhagavad Gita, they say, we have also studied scriptures. Panditam Manyamanaha. If you tell them one verse, they will refute it with another verse. Although nowhere it is said in Shastra, we should not seek Shreya. Huh? You will not find one single statement which says, we should not walk on the path of Shreya. In 12th chapter, Bhagwan says, those who walk on the path of Shreya without preparation, journey is difficult. He doesn't say it is unattainable. We can still get our destination. Klesha is more. But they will say, we have studied scriptures, we have studied so many things. Don't worry about this Atma and all. Just focus on situations. Panditam Manyamanaha. Dandramya Manaha. Because there are so many desires which are melting their heart, melting their mind. That keeps them running around in samsara. Dandramya manaha pariyanti mudaha. They roam around in this samsara of rebirth, sorrow, and it keeps going on. This cycle keeps going on. If they were alone walking on that path, it was okay. But they don't stop there. They ask everybody else to join them. Andhe naiva niyamana yathandaha. They are blindfolded and they are leading everybody else with blindfolds. One Mahatma Ji says, imagine, how will, it, how will the scene look like? You are walking in the forest. There is a blindfolded person leading everybody else who is blindfolded. Means now and then they are crying, they are shouting, some thorn pricks here, some pit is there, they fall inside. Still he says, don't worry, follow me, I am in the right direction. He says, that is this group. Andhe neva niyamana yathanda. You know, there are many points hinted in this verse. Whenever we walk on the spiritual path, we should not be surprised if we face some pushback. Either regarding our goal or regarding the means or our own decision to pursue that goal. He said, don't be surprised if you face any pushback because right from Upanishadic time, these views have been there. He said, why seek the self? Work on situations, that alone will solve everything. That is one point. Spiritual path will have some pushback. Our own social group will start questioning. Relatives will start questioning. He said, what are you seeking? You know, many our university students, they share this. We have study groups, right? You work in the study groups on campus. They say, we feel very hesitant to tell that I am going to a Bhagavad Gita study group. Because not everybody knows what this is. And they will say, live a life like us. If weekend is there, let us go happy hour. He says, where you are going for this study group and all. He says, that is how the mindset is. Don't be surprised. This has been then from time immemorial. Everybody has a place. Everybody has a view. And second is, we should know from whom we should seek endorsement. 
if we seek endorsement from anybody and everybody, he says, this is what we will end up with. Andhe naiva niyamana yathandaha. They are blindfolded. They will take us, they will first put blindfold on us and take us also along with them. Hmm? This is very nicely depicted in Chandogya Upanishad. There is one person who gets kidnapped from Gandhara. The thieves come, they blindfold him, take him to a remote forest and leave him there. Then he is shouting, screaming. One person comes, compassionate person, he opens the blindfold, then he tells him, your village is there, these are the directions. You go straight, turn left, turn right, walk straight. Then this person remembers the instructions, executes it and reaches back his village. That's the story, huh? <laughs> Upanishadic stories start very quickly, end very quickly. <laughs> but there is a similarity, there is a parallel here. Who was that person who got kidnapped? They said it is all of us, Jeeva. Our real home is consciousness. We have started thinking, I am this body, mind and intellect. What is the blindfold that was put? Ignorance. That ignorance, avidya, is a blindfold which is put on our eyes. Who were the thieves who came? Our own past karmas. All punya papa karmas which were done in past birth, we did not seek liberation. Those thieves have pushed us in this body. Shiva Paradakshamapana Sotram, he says, I did not bow down to Bhagwan Shiva. That is why I am having this Sharira now. And the one who is crying, that person, is a Mumukshu. He cries, that person is a Mumukshu. Compassionate person who comes, opens his blindfold, is a Guru. And then he says, this is the path, he is Panditaha Medhavi. He has understood the directions and executes the directions in such a way that he reaches his goal. Both are important. Huh? Understanding is also important. Applying is also important. Otherwise, instructions we take literally, it can cause a lot of chaos. Hmm. This example, you must have heard from your grandparents or in that generation, it was a very popular example. They say there was a mother-in-law with four daughter-in-laws. If four of them are at home, she has to make sure that everybody is taken care of. So whatever job she would give, she would give it to each one, one, one thing. So she said, today evening, one guest is coming. Daughter-in-law one, you will put the banana leaf. Daughter-in-law two, you will put the sabzi on that banana leaf. Daughter-in-law three, your job is to fold the banana leaf. And fourth one is, take away the banana leaf. First one is, put the banana leaf. Second one is, serve. Third one is, fold. Fourth one is, take it away. Guest came. <laughs> First daughter-in-law put the banana leaf. Second one came, put the sabzi on it. Third one came, folded it. <laughs> Fourth one came, took it away. Only instruction was missing was, wait until he eats. <laughs> they say, Panditam, Panditaha Medhavi means, he will not literally apply things and misunderstand the teaching. That's why this Shreya Preya Viveka, we should not start feeling that Upanishad is criticizing our well-being, situations we should not pay attention to. They are not saying that. They say there is a difference between duty, ambition and greed. Duty is kartavya. The moment we sign up for anything, duties will come along with it. To maintain our situations well, we need some kind of ambition that has to be done with devotion. This is when we start wanting things over and above what is already there, that becomes lobha. Means if we make that alone as our goal, 
then we have switched from even kartavya also so kartavya has to be done to the extent that we can seek shreya only no kartavya is the final goal of human birth this point is again bhagavad gita only kruta krutyascha bharata whatever has to be done you would have completed it once you understand the truth you know i want all of us to reflect upon this question which marga am i walking on is it marga of prayer honestly analyze this and eh? don't discuss it with others or try to you know find any good or bad with either just think about which marga am i walking on is it part of prayer or is it part of shreya and second question is after studying whatever you have studied why should one not or why should i not walk on the path of prayer don't worry about shreya marga shreya marga they will themselves tell us what is the beauty what is the greatness but unless i appreciate limitations of prayer shreya marga will not appeal to us and what is definition of shreya prayer seeking solace in situations seeking self abidance seeking solace in situation is prayer seeking self abidance is shreya which marga am i walking on if i find myself on prayer marga why should i not be walking on the path of prayer ओम पूर्णमद पूर्णमद पूर्णा पूर्णमुदच्छते पूर्ण से पूर्णमाताय पूर्णमेवशिष्य ओं शाति 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 हरि ओं श्रीगुरुभ्यो नम हरि ओं